Well, hello, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, it's cold outside, so definitely bundled up on the weekend here in January. But we have a really special car, especially if you like big, full-size domestic vehicles, which, if you're a fan of the channel, you know that I enjoy. It's not that I don't like muscle cars or sporty cars. It's just that, well, these are cars that are actually affordable, and they're great to drive and you get the big engine, you get the heavy duty transmission and rear end and you don't pay that much for them. So, and you get to ride in style and comfort with all your friends and family. So why not buy one of these instead instead of paying tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands more for one of those sporty cars. In any case, this is a 1967 Mercury Park Lane Brome, the penultimate year for the Park Lane series name. It would be dropped in 1969 and the marquee, which began as a coupe only in 1967 and a range topper for Mercury, would become the name for really the entire range topping lineup for Mercury. Convertibles, four doors, two doors, you name it. So there was one more year after this for the Park Lane series. And 1967 was also the first year of the Park Lane Brome. And there were about a little under 5,000 of these four-door hardtop 67 park lanes made. About 500 in this color, which I love. Unfortunately, it's not a sunny day. And here in the Midwest, you just don't get sunny days really at this time of the year. So sorry about that. But you can watch my other video where I did find a few hours where the sun came out and I took photos of this car in the sun in the evening light. It's just gorgeous. But in any case, about 5,000 of these were made in 67. And by the latest track of the data that I have, I think there's about 18 of them registered in the U.S. I can say that I've never seen another 67 Park Lane Brome for sale uh, since I bought this one. And I bought this one 10 years ago. I haven't even seen one for sale. I saw one four-door sedan with the pillar in it for sale in the exact same color combination as this a few years back. But it wasn't nearly in as nice of shape of this. This car only has 17 uh, now 18,000 original miles on it. And when I got it, it was a barn find from upstate New York. Really had never been driven. Bought it out of an estate sale. And the car, the interior you'll see is you know showroom new. The vinyl top is showroom new. The under hood area looks really good. Uh, but the car, because it had been in a barn, you know, different things had been placed on the hood and the trunk. And there were some dings on the side of it. Uh, it just wasn't loved. It was kind of there as a object to store things on top of. So the paint had a number of scratches and a little bit too much for my um, for my liking. I tend to keep my cars as original as possible. But I had this one repainted by Masterworks in Madison Heights, Michigan, and they did a wonderful job. Uh, I've known the owners for years, have them do all my body work. I know nothing about body work. I only do some minor mechanical work. And they actually do quite a bit of the mechanical work on my cars. Is I just don't have time to do it anymore. And they probably do a better job than I do anyway. In any case, in this 67 Park Lane Brome, I would say 5,000-ish of these made. It's hard to say how many Bromes there were made. I would say about half of the penetration, maybe a little bit less, were Bromes. So it's a rare option. Gave you unique interior, door panels, seats, and they're just stellar. And this Brome would continue and the Park Lane both would continue for that one more year in 68. And I think the Brome trim actually got a few more little things like the Twin Comfort lounge seats in 68. But the car did get decontented a bit. Amazingly, uh, this car came without power, uh, some power key items. This one does, does have power steering. You could get these without power steering. That was Power steering wasn't even standard on this car. And in 68, they didn't have power steering or power brake standard on the Park Lane series. You had to get both of them optional. You can live with manual drum brakes, uh, but on this car, power steering, I, I can't even imagine it. It's, it's so heavy. And this car isn't overly optioned. It doesn't have air conditioning. It came with, according to the Marty Report, white wall tires, tinted windshield, not tinted glass, doesn't have air conditioning. It was, I said, an upstate New York car. Back then, it didn't get too hot up there, I guess. It does have on the inside an AM radio. It has intermittent wipers, has the cornering lights, which you can see there. And it did have the door edge guards, which I took off when I had the car repainted. I'm not a big fan of the door edge guards, but that's about it. 
And I will say that if you find one of these for sale, don't buy it because I want it. No, I'm kidding. Um, they're great vehicles to own. Fords from about 1965 through 74, in my opinion, are just sublime. And the best ones with the greatest style to me are the late 60s, early 70s, that 67 to 72 ish time frame. And this one, the upper is a little bit boxier than what I would like, admittedly. But in 68, that roof line would change. You would have a more sweeping uh, back end here as opposed to it being more vertical and formal and upright. But I still think it's a really handsome car and a one year only car. Front end changes in 68, although the sheet metal like the fenders and the doors uh, didn't or the hood or the trunk, but some of the little doodads and trim did. And I think it's just overall beautiful car. So let's take a look around it and describe it in some more detail. Okay, so let's walk around the park lane here. And as I mentioned, this car does have cornering lights, which gave you this nice piece of trim here. It's beautiful. If you didn't get those, you got kind of this shark guild trim piece that I think looks a little wonky. It does have wheel covers that I believe are trying to mimic the Pontiac 8 lugs maybe unsuccessfully, but Mercury was not really a Oldsmobile Buick competitor by and large. It was really a Pontiac competitor for many years. And they imitated Pontiac on a number of things. I think what you could even see in this car, you see like this little kick up and rise here that as the C-pillar comes down and in the back door. And this car actually even has a little bit of a so-called Coke bottle shape, which is this bulge that you get in plan view, i.e. looking from the top down on the car, as well as the side view where it bulges up. But it's a very, very subtle Coke bottle shape, almost indiscernibly so. If you look at a Pontiac from like 1965, that Coke bottle shape is just so pronounced. But here it's far more subtle. It is present though, as I said, if you can, it's hard to see it, but the car does bulge out and then taper back in here a little bit. I do think the back end on this car is just a great trademark with these vertical taillights. Mercury would go away from that in 1969. They had it for a number of years before this, but 67 really introduced this clean look and unbroken taillight before it was kind of two pieces. And I think it's handsome. In 68, I think the taillight even got more handsome because they changed the design of this piece. And overall, even though people think that this is imitating a Cadillac, I'd say it's pretty close to the 64 Bonneville rear, including this horizontal trim that helps emphasize the horizontal nature of the car. One interesting tidbit is that if you got the lower end series, not the park lanes like the Montclairs and the Monterey's, you didn't get those little end cap trim pieces. They costed those out. Yes, <laughs> I can't believe that's what they did, but they did. I guess it's the bean counters. But just lovely detailing like that Mercury emblem. You can see how nice the paint is and the reflection. The only thing on the outside that denotes that this is a brome is this script here on the vinyl roof. But on the inside, prepare for sybaritic luxury. This car is just so comfortable. The seats are magnificent. I think the door panels are very stately. This car doesn't have power windows, so it's got the cranks. Has the light in the sail panel. They all open the door so you can see, and it has the light in the door as well. That light would move strangely back here to the back of the door in 68. Not sure why they moved it from front to back. Maybe they thought it just gave better light at night. And this so-called Cyclops speedometer here, that existed on the dashboards for two years. You can see this car just ticked over 18,000 miles. When I got it, I think it had 15 or 16,000. I keep driving it because it's just such a great drive with the 410 cubic inch V8 under hood. And I love, you know, these different lights. I've been running it, so unfortunately the cold light isn't on. And you get a reading light there. Loop pile carpeting. You can see it says disc brakes on the brake pedal. 
And again, a handsome driver's side door panel. Let's take a look under the hood and see this 410 cubic inch V8. It made 330 horsepower. It was a two year only engine, only available in Mercury's. It's effectively a 390 with a 428 crank. And there you have it. It made 330 horsepower, I believe. You could get the optional 428 cubic inch V8 as well. It made 345 horsepower. In 68, this 410 would be gone. And standard would be the 390 V8 that made 315 horsepower. As you can see, this car doesn't have air conditioning. There's no compressor here. And it's got this tiny little two row radiator, which this is still the original radiator and it's not plugged at all. You can see the fins look great. Need to blow some air through there just to get the little dust particles out, but it works. Not even a declutching fan on these non AC cars. But this engine is so smooth. I'll start it up here. By the way, always check to make sure your Fords are securely in park of this era. You really shouldn't do this, but. So smooth, so quiet. I love the faux wood grain badging here, by the way. Later in 68, this trim piece would also have faux wood grain in the middle. Although if you got a 68 Meteor, the Canadian only cars, this was the same trim piece. They used this 67 trim on the 68 Meteors. And I've added factory style duels to this car. You see it still has the original dealer sticker. Just a lovely car overall. These cars have, fast idle won't quite kick down yet. These cars have such a quality about them. When you shut the door, it just, I mean, listen to that noise. GM could never get that like that. And I'm a big GM fan. Sorry, GM fans. Nor could Chrysler. But just a wonderfully handsome car overall. I do have a Hawaii license plate on there because this is similar to the car that was on Hawaii 50. That was a 68 Park Lane Brome hardtop. It was black. But I thought it was just fun. And here I'll turn on the cornering light so you can see it. There you go. And the one year only 67 flower pot steering wheel for safety. In 68, they had the collapsible st steering column. Eh, got to wait a few more minutes for it to idle down. I'll just turn it off. So let's take one last look at the Park Lane Brome. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.